So turn is an eight. Now, how often do we need to turn? Very interesting question. I give you a little hint. Uh, the quizzes can be quite tough. I give you a little hint here. Hey guys, let's get right into it. And in this video, I really want you guys to participate, to pause when the question appears so you can test your own abilities. That's the best way of improving. I understand there are a lot of tools that focus on GTO, which is good. My way of studying, my way of improving is always to test your own knowledge first. So when you look up a st spot, to not jump right into the result and just look up the result. No, you should ask yourself, okay, what would I do? This is also very much focused on GTO here as well. But then after the questions, you and you will see that I also have the um, opportunity to share in a quick video my thoughts. I will give you an explanation why we want to do certain things. And as you can see, you will find a bunch of different topics where you can do uh, quizzes. It's also uh, replayer quizzes, even video quizzes. And yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. And we have the spot as I had it on stream in the uh, 10K cutoff opens. And of course, first of all, in order to get a good assessment, uh, how we should approach this hand preflop and postflop, we want to get an idea of what is the opening. Our preflop ranges are always based on GTO. And then along the way, of course, um, also me sharing my insights on exploitative play. So what is our opponent supposed to be open raising here? I would assume... Yeah, I don't think six. Wow, well, okay. Yeah. I mean, he needs to adjust a little bit. So he has a short stick on the button, short stick in the big blind. So uh, with 30 big blinds, you should not open a 30 big blind range. Um, so you should be opening more like a 20, 25 big blind range, and then it's significant tighter. For the sake of simplicity, assuming it would be an average 30 big blinds, um, I don't think we want to be opening 10, 6. And I don't think we want to be opening. Yeah, I think this. I yeah, I, I don't think we want to be opening um can also zoom in. Um I don't think we want to be opening ever jack six suited or queen three suited from cutoff. I think this would be too loose. Um but yeah. Yeah. Even this looks pretty loose to be honest. King three a seven off. Yeah. I would probably mix between queen nine off, sometimes open, sometimes fold. All right, um, it's fold to us in the big blind. And now what is our response here? Um, okay, let's minimize my shit face. So what are we, what is our response with 15 big blinds now? Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of these jack nine, queen nine suited jams. King suit, six suited, as you know, from previous streams, absolute powerhouse. So, yeah, I think king six, king seven is in there quite a lot. But then do we jam all these suited aces? And we call the off suited aces. Hmm. I would go, oh, okay, it's this one. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I was, it, it was either this or this because either the suited king x we jam or we jam the queen nine. Reason being uh, with both, but I think both ranges are fine is we want to get them fold. But I yeah, actually we defend quite some suited aces uh, as well, just call. So we very well covered on ace high boards. Yeah, making them fold queen jack off, making them fold queen 10, uh, better hands. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we even jammed some suited king x hands. I was just, I thought it would be king six, king seven, but as you can see, it's king five suited. But that's not a big issue. So, all right, we go to the flop. What is big blind's equity on this board? Um, so, always a good practice to manifest your understanding of equities on certain board textures. And yeah, jack 10 7, given our wide big blind defending range, we have queen 5 off, we have 8 6 off, we have 4 5 off. He nails this board pretty well with his range. So I would go with the lowest, 42. Uh, even if they're 38, if the if it would be 51, 42, 38, I would have gone for 38. 
Um, but of course, I created this quiz myself, so I'll probably get a lot of these questions <laughs> right. But this is more for you. Okay, what is the overall seabed frequency from the cutoff? So this is very interesting, right? We have cutoff perspective has such a huge equity advantage, yet he doesn't really want to seabed 100%. Now the question is, how often does he see bet? And I honestly would have guessed 65 if I didn't know that it's 52. Wait, is it 65? No, I think it's 52. Yeah, uh, I would have guessed 65. But now, since things might get a little more complicated, you might be wondering, okay, why don't we see bet 100%? We got a little explanation video for you. And I'm going to shut up. And now you can just watch this video. So as you can see, we see that way less, even though we have still almost 60% equity advantage. However, the problem is if you see that too much, then your opponent just makes so much money by constantly check chubbing on you, right? We see that a lot of jack eggs and even some pair plus gacho just want to be going check race all in here. And the problem is that even though you might have profitable bets, that your you make your, your opponent an easy life just going all in with a lot of hands and you constantly bet forward, bet forward, bet forward. And he's going to be increasing uh, significantly his EV with all his raises, which is not really our goal. So as a rule of thumb, when you're 10, 15, 20 big blinds post flop, even though it's a very favorable board texture, uh, favorable board texture means that you have more better hands, you have more nutted hands, but this doesn't really matter with 50 big blinds. Like if you have a pair or your top pair, you go all in, you don't care, okay, my opponent can have aces, but with that stack size, so be it, right? Nuttedness and range advantage is more important with deeper stack sizes where it's going to be more expensive if you now start raising your jack five and then you want to play a big pot against all the sets and over pairs, right? So that's why we call more, we raise less on these boards when the stack size gets deeper. But once we have 15 big blinds, we can play way more aggressively. That's why as the imposition player, you want to start checking back. With 100 big blinds, you're not going to face a raise from queen jack or even jack nine, jack eight, right? But here with that stack size, a little different and that's why we want to do, be doing way more checking. Yeah, and this is what I really like, that it's not just about showing you, oh, we're supposed to be seabedding only 52% and then you're left alone. And yeah, you see the result, but you don't really understand why do we only seabed 52%, right? So this is very, very important to me that all of these analysis that you get an explanation. We used to have the written explanation and now from these days onwards, we uh updated it to more video explanations and as well as also showing you the sims if you're interested to dive deeper and have a look into the respective strategies so let's move on so turn is an eight now how often do we need to turn very interesting question i give you a little hint uh, the quizzes can be quite tough i give you a little hint here remember that the imposition player is checking back not his super strong hands, but he's betting very polarized, right? So he's betting a lot of ace-5 and, and a queen-5 and king-6 suited. But he's checking back a lot of like middling hands, right? So keep that in mind when you try now to solve this question, how often should we lead on the turn? All right, I'm going to go for 15 because I know <laughs> it's 15. I uh, created those quizzes. Um, honestly, if you would have asked me and I would have not known the answer, I would have guessed 35 because I thought that uh, us having more 9x will allow us to lead uh, fairly wide. Uh, but yeah, let's look into it. So it's 15% leading, which is not Tricky a Tricky question, I know, but it's important to understand these spots. Yes, we're supposed to lead a decent amount of the time, but remember, our opponent also checking back a lot of um, hands. He's betting very polarized, right? So he's betting his ace-5 or king-5. If we go back... And uh, this is what you need to understand. So this part here, his trash or pocket deuce, pocket threes, ace three, where we generate the auto forts from, are going to be betting the flop. So once the eight gets there, it also really connects with his check back range, right? If we, uh, let's say we bet here, um, one third pot size, you see we b bet into a very um, condensed range around the 10x, the 9x, the jack x, uh, ace kings, ace queens, um, 8x, also a lot of with backdoor flushes. So we have very little 
forward equity and we actually see that the imposition player even though he checks back he still has 46 percent equity which is still quite a lot remember he checks back the flop signalizing he doesn't have a very strong hand yet on this turn uh, he still has 46% equity. And we still have the equity uh, positional disadvantage. So this is where you need to be very, very careful with just, oh, we have more 9x. Yes, we have more 9x in queen c. We bet a bunch of these 9x and then our weakest flush draws, a bunch of queen x, but that's pretty much it, right? Because we also have a lot of hands like an 8, a 10, a jack that don't really want to bet and actually pot control. All right, let's continue How often is villain supposed to delay bet using a one-third sizing only? 85, 65, 55. I'm actually not 100% sure it's 65 or 55. Um, it's still quite a lot. Um, betting more than half percent of the time. Um, I would... I'm actually not sure. I would guess 55 because, again, we also still have... Again, it's like a... I don't want to say a neutral card, but it's not as bad as the in-position player as you might think, all right? Um, so where now the big blind player has a huge nut advantage because we st still have all the 9x, yet it's almost even, right? Remember, we had 46 or 47% equity for the in-position player. It kind of shows that, yeah, we don't want to be overly aggressive, but delay betting 55% is still... A relatively aggressive strategy and we're going to be looking into the explanation so for that reason even though villain slightly has an equity disadvantage because he checked back the flop but as we just said in the previous video he still has 46 percent equity and he has the positional advantage so he gets to be aggressive quite a lot and as a rule of thumb on these kind of boards we bet very polarized as we've seen on the flop here, a similar approach right if we go back to the flop we want to be betting those weaker high card hands that have very little short on value. Checking the middling part, we see a lot of green hands here, right? Makes a lot of sense with uh, ace, ha ace eight, ace nine, king seven, uh, even queen eights type of hands. And the same continues, same pattern on the turn. We bet as the label of all these weaker ace uh, once we check them back, we start betting those now uh, on the turn. And then we bet our 9x, we can start betting some 10x for protection. A king 10 of hearts is not such a bad bet because our opponent still has, uh, yeah, some hands he's calling. If he has like 8-6 or 7, we see against a small bet, he's supposed to be calling some of these hands, right? So we go for a thin protection slash value bet, which is not bad. And then, of course, our king queens, ace queens uh, doing a healthy mix, sometimes checking, sometimes betting. Uh, sometimes also checking a 9 here, So, but overall we remain relatively aggressive even though we check the flop and it might appear as first that the one card straight here is better for the big blind. But that's not the case. We remain quite aggressive as we see lots of betting here with some very unnatural bluffs and it's important to also find these bluffs. Alright, let's move on. So, yeah, just quick summary. The cutoff still finds some, some very unnatural bluffs with the king fives and ace fives, right? Trying to attack our 8x and 7x, basically preparing a river bluff where we're going to have a lot of call turn forward river hands. Um, so any jack, any 10 is, is a clear call here. How often do we continue 8x not having additional draw like 8, 4, 8, 2 suited? So we're not going to have queen 8 or... Uh, yeah, basically queen eights or queen seven. So just a naked eight, four suited eight deuce. How often do we continue those? You might have just seen it in the sim. Um, so yeah, I think around, it was around 50%. Very, very, very break even ish. Let's look so into it. in total, we see the eight X hands. Um, yeah, eight deuce, we defend 100%, eight, five, around 40%. So I would say an average. Uh, these hands when we're defending 50% uh, of the time. However, I think it's important to make very disciplined forwards here simply because people are not going to be bluffing these hands quite aggressively. So this is where you're just mostly going to be running into very high equity hands like king queens, even ace queen, ace king still have a lot of equity. Or can, can you bluff you out of the pot on the river? So I would fold these in, in practice, right? In real life, 
This is where we want to make these faults and not follow GTO. This is just as delay bluff. Also something we have found figured out in the term masterclass in the data database research and analysis um, where delay betting uh, is, is heavily under bluffed in these sports. People are not bluffing like 50% or betting 50%. It's more like 30, 35, even tops 40%. So this is basically caused by people not finding these natural bluffs. And Unnatural therefore, bluffs. here uh, we're go going to be making a big mistake, burning a lot of money if we continue with So I'm sharing this knowledge here with you as well. So you're not going to be making these. Uh, this would be one major adjustment I would do in order to not be so sticky against delay bets. So we want to be continuing a jack or a 10 or a pair and a draw. If we have like 10, qu queen 10 or queen 8, queen 7, these hands are much better in calling here uh, or 10x in clubs. Yeah, or, or an overcut is also helpful something like uh, queen seven here as we can see or, or king seven is, is slightly better but it's also probably a fold um, because we also block a lot of his bluffs right the most likely bluffs are coming from a6 and king x so that's where we actually see an eight deuce is a, is a better call than than a king seven um, yeah so uh, you be very very careful so it's probably uh, as, a, as a great exploit just continue with a pair and a draw for the 7x and 8x and then call any 10x and jack x um, even even 10 deuces here these probably are so fine to fold against population yeah we should even make heavy adjustments to be honest here and, and just be very very tight calling against the delay bet even though it's only one third so yeah, I think it's, so it's, it's, it's very important to just pure forward 10x, I think, uh, without a flush draw. I think uh, if we reduce, let's say, people bluffing ace 5 from 50% of the time to like 10%, 20%, you're just going to have a losing call with these 10x hands and 8x hands that don't have a redraw. All right, let's get to the river. This is where things are getting dicey. Uh, which hands... Is villain supposed to bluff the most? Uh, king queen with one club, ace king ace queen with one club, deuces threes fours with one club. Um, yeah, they all seem reasonable. So I'm gonna go for all of them. Sometimes it's only one, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's all three of them. And we're so basically king queen with all one, all king queen off Columbus with one club, ace king ace queen with one club are reasonable bluffs here. And we're gonna be so yeah, as we it. can see, the in position player is supposed to be very aggressive. He has um, once he bluffs this turn, he's gonna be bluffing gut shots and um, flush draws. So his flush draws improves. So then, if he remains with ace king ace queen off these kind of hands with one club, they wanna be bluffing, which makes a lot of sense. And then also his under pairs. So yeah, a very aggressive strategy here for the in-position player, which is be betting around 65%. If you, for example, take a three in 56. diamonds, we see now Mess his betting her. range is, is much tighter. He only bets 50%, but now the 10 in clubs is actually a good card. Once again, right? He improves to, sorry, it's 55%. So it's 5% more, but it's 5% more. It's, it's significant. It's important to understand that even though it's the middling card is paired and brings the back to flush, it's still better than a blank because turn... Uh, remember, we would be betting some of our flush draws as the out-of-position player, right? We would be leading something like 6-5 in clubs. But <clears throat> now we check. We have less flushes, but the in-position player is betting a lot of flush draws. And now the flush gets there, so he's going to be having here um, a lot of very strong hands. Still equity disadvantage, so that's why he's only betting 50%. If we, for example, take uh, the queen in clubs, right? We see he's even betting more. Uh, and he has a little bit more equity with 50% because now even our queen x improve, ace king, eight king queens have shot on value and he is basically bluffing uh, with, with a lot of hands. He, even f all of these underpairs, even if they don't have a club, a lot of these a6 remaining very aggressive. So 10 improves the imposition player's bluffs at least to a certain degree. That's why he can fill up with a lot of these, even like ace four and hearts wants to bluff sometimes. And yeah, these under pairs uh, being quite aggressive. I don't want to spoil too much for the next question, but it's of course very important to understand how a strategy is supposed to look like in theory in order to figure out whether we want to be hero calling this combo. And now it's up to you. And this is why it is so damn important to look into our opponent's response. Because at first, I was leveling myself. Well, if he bluffs the king-queens, ace-kings with one club, king-jack should be a reasonable call. 
Is that really the case? Let's look into it. How often do we bluff catch with King Jack off having one club with this versus sizing? Again, just only in theory. Um, is it 75, 40, never? I think it was 40%. Yeah. All right. Let's look into it. So yeah, King Jack off is basically a coin flip. Sometimes we call, sometimes we fold. Um, I think in, in theory, it's, it's important to understand this, but in practice, in hindsight, I will always fold. The reason being, this is just not happening. The people find all... They, they're probably going to be finding all these bluffs with the broadways. But again, they have to bluff it every time. The moment they shy away from it, just like 5-10%, our king-jack call becomes really bad. So even though if someone bluffs all these ace-queen, king-queens, and in-game I was like, yeah, Very he's important. probably going to be bluffing all of this. But then he still needs to be bluffing ace-4 suited in hearts here like 10% of the time. All these under pairs. I just don't think this is very realistic. Even though queen six and spades, I think it's probably just going to be giving it up or even bluffing the flop. So that's where I do believe this is not going to be happening. And that's why I think we should just be calling straights, flushes and boats. That's perfect. That's the GTO solution, the new GTO solution against population because they under bluff even against a very aggressive opponent. I don't think they're going to be finding all these bluffs. So here, in theory, fine call by me in practice. Horrible call, and I would consider this as a mistake. So, this is where I would say that I, yeah, definitely fucked up on the river. Let's continue. Is there all right? We got a 88 score. Hey, one was so, yeah, if 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 we also with his deck size, he might not be opening dudes, threes, fours, fives, right. Um, he might just be open shoving it or uh, not open. Sh yeah, he's probably not open shoving it, but it's probably not opening into these deck size. You never know. Sometimes some players overvalue these pairs, even with these against these deck sizes. So there might be few in his range, but I don't think he's going to be delay bluffing, bluffing all of them with one club. So if you just take them out, if he's a little bit hesitant with the king queen, only like 10% of the time, 5% of the time, this really damages the EV of my king jack offhand. And then it will slip into a minus EV call. And that's how it is. And also, I don't think he's ever going to be bluffing ace four and hearts. I think it's a very counterintuitive bluff. But uh, we, we need to have these bluffs sometimes just because this card is, as I said, actually much better for the cutoff. So, yeah, I made the call. He showed up with ace nine off and I lost a significant um, portion of my stack. And yeah, I'm also willing to show this with you guys so you can learn from it. And I have to say from my experience, even those very aggressive players on, on high stakes are probably under bluffing these runouts. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that piece of content. Let me know what you think about this hand. And yeah, let me know what was your score um, in case you did this in paired or why you would had to have you had like 50% of the times uh, the questions right. Like even if you didn't do it in paired, if you just did it here, like what's your intuition? It was like 40, 50, 60% of the times. And then see you guys next time. Bye-bye.